Hi guys, um, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist at York Hospital. And uh, today I wanted to do a video blog on the subject of lifestyle and the importance really on uh, your heart and how uh, the lifestyle choices that we make influence um, our overall health and in particular the health of our heart. Um, so the first thing to say is that I've now been doing um, cardiology and general medicine for almost 15 years. And during my 15 years, I have um, seen amazing advances in the treatment of heart disease. Um, you know, when I, when I started off as a medical student, things like stents didn't even exist. And now uh, you have these amazing um, uh, units that have been set up and the person has a heart attack and the first and the, and the ambulance is called immediately and the ambulance rushes the, uh, the patient to the hospital where they get taken in and the stent is implanted and the heart attack is therefore aborted and the patient does really well and then goes home. And we pat ourselves on the back and we feel proud that we have done something really good. And a lot of research and a lot of money and a lot of effort is being uh, spent on developing newer and newer treatments to try and help us live longer. Uh, uh, but what is very interesting is that despite all these advances, um, the burden so the incidence, the prevalence, and the burden of cardiovascular disease is increasing. And even though people are living longer, overall, when I look around myself and I look at my patients and I look at the population that I deal with, and I'm sure this is true for everywhere else as well, uh, people are generally sicker than before. Um, so they may be living longer, but um, their quality of life is not as good. Uh, they're requiring more and more tablets. Uh, and they're, they're more, um, <clears throat> there's a lot more comor comorbidity. And in general, quality of life as a whole is not as good. And, um, <clears throat> uh, and part of the explanation for this is that, you know, the population is getting older. Um, but um, undoubtedly a huge part of this is also because of the lifestyle choices we make. Indeed, a lot of um, emphasis is placed on trying to find treatments, uh, but more importantly is the fact that is often neglected is the fact that our lifestyle choices have probably resulted in these conditions developing. And unless we make a real effort to modify our lifestyle choices, uh, we can never really get the underlying condition better. You may be able to mask it with treatments, uh, but you don't get rid of it altogether. And this is the real problem with cardiovascular disease. You don't get rid of it. It stays with you once it's developed. And therefore, a crucial um, part of the management has to be able, it has to be to address lifestyle uh, choices which could have caused these problems to develop in the first place and ultimately eventually several uh, hopefully in the future people will be targeting a lot more of their effort in trying to prevent the cardiovascular disease from developing in the first place rather than tackling it after it has developed so uh, this series of blogs is a lot about preventive cardiology and identifying um, aspects of lifestyle uh, which uh, as doctors we can tackle at an early stage to allow our patient um, to have a better quality of life and hopefully not develop the complications of cardiovascular or, or complications of um, cardiovascular disease. Um, now it is important to say uh, that it is now recognized that lifestyle-related illnesses are the single largest cause of death in the Western world. And these fall in four main groups, uh, but there are others. But cardiovascular disease by far is the commonest. Respiratory disease such as um, COPD and asthma, cancers, and diabetes. And most lifestyle-related diseases are caused by uh, four main behaviors. Uh, and that is the intake of tobacco, excessive alcohol, physical inactivity, and an unhealthy diet. 
In addition, I believe that uh, modern day lifestyle puts upon us an excessive amount of stress, which I suspect is also um, a very important but often neglected contributor to the development of lifestyle related disease. Um, <clears throat> now, I went to an interesting website uh, um, which is run by the European Society of Lifestyle, and the link is at the bottom of the screen. Uh, but I uh, found out there that tobacco use leads up to 6 million deaths per year and is expected by 2030 to cause 8 million deaths per year. 600,000 deaths per year occur from exposure just to secondhand smoke. So people who don't smoke, who are exposed to secondhand smoke, um, 600,000 people die per year as a consequence of that. Uh, harmful drinking, for example, can lead to 2.3 million deaths per year. Physical inactivity contributes to 3.2 million deaths per year. And in terms of diet, it's estimated that 1.7 million deaths per year are caused by inadequate fruit and vegetable consumption. And the problem with, um, from a cardiovascular perspective is that these behaviors cause four key metabolic and physiological changes within the body. They raise the blood pressure. They cause patients to become overweight and ultimately obese. They cause an increase in insulin resistance and therefore eventually lead to the development of diabetes. And they also cause hyperlipidemia. And all these physiological changes then lead to the development of atherosclerosis, uh, which initially is salient, but eventually develops to form symptomatic uh, vasculopathy and symptomatic coronary artery disease, as well as cerebrovascular disease. Um, and there was an interesting study that I came across, which was published all the way back in 1998 um, by uh, Wanamethi and Al in the Archives of Internal Medicine. And what they did was um, they studied 7,142 men uh, and they followed them up over 15 years and they identified their lifestyle factors. Um, and wanted to see whether the lifestyle that these people were choosing had an impact on their 15-year um, survival free of heart attack, stroke, or diabetes. So the lifestyle measures they looked at were body mass index, the smoking status, alcohol intake, and physical activity. And the results are quite startling, really, because what they found was that um, with increasing smoking levels, there was no doubt that the risk of death or heart attack, stroke, and diabetes rose. Heavy smokers, i.e. people who were smoking more than 21 cigarettes a day, were two and a half times more likely to die or have a heart attack, stroke, or diabetes than non-smokers. If you had a body mass index of 26 or higher, this increased the, this increased the risk of death, heart attack, stroke, or diabetes. And actually, if you had a body mass index of between 26 and 28, that increased your risk by 28%. And if you had a, um, a body mass index of more than 30, that doubled the risk of, heart, of um, developing, uh, of dying as a result of, uh, um, uh, of dying or having a heart attack, stroke, or developing diabetes. In fact, um, they also looked at exercise and they found that all levels of exercise reduced the, dis the risk of death or heart attack, stroke, and diabetes. And they generally found that moderate exercise could reduce the risk by as much as 40%. So overall, they concluded, for example, a 50-year-old man who has an 89% chance of surviving to 65 without developing heart disease, stroke, or diabetes if he has never smoked, if he's physically active and he's not overweight. However, if he smokes or is, is, if he smokes, is inactive and is very overweight, his chances of surviving to 65 without developing heart disease, strokes, diabetes is only 42%. And this really shows how um, much of a magnitude um, uh, lifestyle choices can have on our health. And therefore, as clinicians, I think it's really important that we spend that time with our patients and educate them about the fact that unless they really choose to modify their lifestyle, they are not going to get better from, them cardiac, from their cardiovascular disease. 
they, we may be able to mask the symptoms of the cardiovascular disease. Um, we may be able to control the progression of the cardiovascular disease, but they will still always have it. And it can always therefore manifest with symptoms or cardiac events in the future. And therefore it is really important that in, apart from just giving them medications, uh, that uh, it is homed in and that actually, unless you choose to change your lifestyle, unless you choose to curtail smoking, improve your nutrition, get some exercise, uh, reduce alcohol intake, um, um, you, will, you will not really get significantly better. Um, so over the next few weeks, I'd like, I'm going to try and tackle various aspects of lifestyle and see um, <clears throat> and uh, talk to you about how uh, these could impact on cardiac health. Um, so my name is Sanjay Gupta, and I look forward to speaking to you again in the near future. Uh, thank you very much.